know, in this uh, effort to discredit climate science in the lead up to the uh, 2009 Copenhagen summit, um, um, where you know various emails, including emails that were mine or were written to me, were stolen and then combed through to try to find words and phrases that, if you took them out of context, could sound, um, you know a little questionable, could be used to try to make it sound like climate scientists were engaged in something inappropriate, were hiding something. And so that's what climate change deniers did. They combed through thousands of emails looking for even just one little short phrase that they could use to try to attack climate scientists. And one phrase that they seized upon was an email uh, to me and some other scientists from my colleague Phil Jones of the University of East Anglia. What the critics also tried to do is to take two different phrases from the same email that appear at opposite ends of a very long sentence and splice them together so you actually heard people, there were people out there claiming that the email talked about uh, using a trick to hide the decline, using Mike's trick to hide the decline. The email doesn't say anything of the sort. The hide the decline is referring to something else later in the sentence. What uh, Phil Jones was talking about was that one particular climate reconstruction that was shown in his comparison uh, that had been performed by uh, Keith Briffa um, and colleagues at the University of East Anglia. Um, they had used uh, density, the density of the rings of trees. So in addition to the width of the um, individual tubings, the density of the wood that makes up the trees also appears to respond to the climate. So with, have, with our warmer summers, we tend to get um, trees which are denser, especially at the end of the grand season, the kind of the, the late wood that's put down by the trees at the end of the grand season. The density there is linked to summer temperature even more strongly than the width of the ring widths. So you can use tree ring uh, growth thicknesses to tell you something about climate, but it turns out that if you look at the density of the wood that grows in any particular year, that also tells you something about temperature. And so they had performed a reconstruction of temperatures uh, using exclusively these tree ring density measurements. And for various reasons that have been explored for you know, now uh, nearly two decades, um, these particular measurements track temperatures very well um, until about 1960, and then they begin to diverge. And what tree-ring divergence is, is a separation in the trends of the tree data and the temperature data in recent decades. So if you go back to the early part of the 20th century, there's quite a good correspondence between the tree data and the temperatures, so that warmer summers tend to coincide with um, wider rings or with denser um, wood in those rings, and colder summers with less dense wood or thinner rings. The thermometer measurements tell us very clearly that the globe warmed substantially since then, but the tree ring data stopped, the tree ring densities that they used, stop sort of reflecting that uh, warming. So the divergence problem is something that affects some tree rings. Often it's con misconstrued as if it affects all tree rings. What it is is that for some tree rings, the changes in recent decades have gone down while the temperatures recorded at the same locations have gone up. Um, whereas if you go back to previous decades, the tree rings have responded quite closely to the temperatures. So when the summers are warmer than normal, the trees have tended to grow more than normal. And our view has been that this is, um, the cause of it is likely to be something fairly unique to the 20th century because in order to have this common effect on many different trees across the Northern Hemisphere, um, you need something you know, large scale and, and, and affecting, a, you know, many regions in one, um, in one time period and therefore some anthropogenic pollution related um, influence or maybe some climate warming related influence could be um, part of the explanation. So there's a paper recently by Stein and Hoibers um, that suggested that changes in the sunlight reaching the trees could explain the divergence and they backed that up by looking back at the earlier record and identifying a change when volcanic eruptions occur, which also put um, aerosol and dust into the atmosphere, and which can also affect the amount of sunlight reaching the trees. And that seemed to be consistent with the, diverg with the locations where the divergence is strongest in recent decades. Before that um, email ever was written, they had published a year earlier a paper in the journal Nature talking about this problem it was hardly something that was hidden or nefarious. Uh, they were well aware of this problem and they stated very clearly in that paper in 1999, 1998 that 
because of this problem, you should not use the post-1960 data to depict temperature changes. Um, and so what Phil Jones was talking about, that email, was he was hiding, all he meant was not misleading the readers of this report by showing them this very misleading um, post-1960 tree ring density data because they wrongly convey what was actually happening with temperatures. And we have thermometer measurements that tell us what actually happened with temperatures. So he was literally saying, for this simple graphic that's supposed to convey to this lay audience what we know about temperatures over the past thousand years, let's not show this bad data that will confuse them and mislead them. Uh, but somehow that was parlayed once again into something nefarious, something inappropriate by you know, some very cynical bad faith actors who were you know, using this misdirection and confusion really as a distraction to make sure that there were no meaningful negotiations and dealing with climate change at the upcoming uh, Copenhagen summit in 2009. But that's sort of what you have when you're left without a legitimate argument for your case, which is where we ha what we have in the case of climate change denial today. All you've got to turn to, apparently, is innuendo and obfuscation and misdirection. And this was just another example of that.